Hello, and welcome to the Patient First Podcast, where we, of course, look to increase the influence of today's engaged dentists. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Laskin, and I'm really excited today because we have a great, great guest, Alex Johnson, who's the Director of Engineering, Regulation, and Quality at Vista Apex. He's been with Vista Apex for eight and a half years. His educational background, he has a BS and MS in biomedical engineering from a school where lots of great people go to, including myself <laughs> and Alex, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, go Badgers. Uh, he's, he's focused on biomaterials and tissue engineering. He's a co-inventor of 12 granted or pending patents worldwide and co-author of 18 peer-reviewed journal publications. Alex, thanks so much for being here. Hey, thanks, Dr. Laskin. Really happy to be here. Looking forward to today's discussion. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, we were talking a little bit before the podcast, and I had the complete honor of coming out to Wisconsin and hanging out at your amazing facility. Not quite in Madison, but it's but it's close by uh, yeah. uh, at, at Vista Apex. And, you know, we met and I was like, I'd love to have you on the podcast because you represent well an entire category of, I think, unsung heroes in dentistry, right? Mm -hmm. I think that there's a couple categories where the average general dentist doing their best for their patients all day long, every day, don't realize some of the things behind the scenes that goes on that, that really is transforming the industry. I think of Dennis Urban from NDX, who's a fantastic lab technician that's doing stuff on the lab side as sure. like one category of, of my superheroes of dentistry that don't get shine a light on. But then also people like yourself in product development. I mean, I've been a dentist for 20 years the products that I use, there's nothing that I use today that I would have used 20 years ago, right? Sure. And it's because of people like you. And so how did you get into dentistry? Yeah, so that's, you know, that's a good question. So I was in grad school at, at UW-Madison and uh, my wife, she's a practicing dentist. So she went to Marquette Dental School and I, I stopped my, I was in the PhD program and I stopped at a master's to uh, move in with her. So I moved to Milwaukee and I was looking for a job and uh, Vista Apex, they didn't have, you know, any openings at that time, but I just sent my resume and they were, hey, come in for an interview. And one thing led to another. And that's how I started working at Vista Apex. <laughs> I know so many people who are like what I would say top of their field, who, who I've talked to, who have a similar story where they, there wasn't a job opening, but they reached out. Yeah. And so that's, that's great. And so I've gotten to know the people at Vista Apex a little bit and just the best. I mean, you, you guys are just the, the best to work with hands awesome. down right <laughs> thank you. yeah no i uh, thank you and and i and i and i can see probably you walked in and they were like oh he's one of us and just this that, that's great you know and i was talking we were again we were talking about a little bit before the podcast and when i was out in wisconsin that uh i don't know how to say this but i think if the average dentist could had the honor of like going through this to apex or even another product development facility in dentistry and had the experience of talking to people like you and how you test materials, I think they would look very differently at how they use the materials. Uh, I don't want to put you in a bad spot to like talk uh, negatively about the people that you serve so well being general dentists, but how would you say that from your perspective, if, if you could talk to dentists and knowing what you know from a product development standpoint, and then also how these products are used, any advice that you would give dentists? Yeah, I think, I think to your point, you know, anything in the instructions is obviously really, really important. And sort of as we walk through some of, uh, you know, our, our development process and sort of our strategy to, to product development, everything that's in there is, is super important and stuff that we've had to, you know, validate through testing internally, externally. But I, I think your point is, is sort of well taken for even just a lot of just normal patients in terms of their interactions with the dentist or any dental professional in that there's so much there from even a, a caries restoration that it seems like to the average person, it should be relatively simple, but there's just so many facets and variables that go into really any procedure. So I think just the more that some of the knowledge is shared and research is done and in communications, like with key opinion leaders like yourself and the work that we've done and will continue to do together. I think that's where a lot of that information then sort of gets disseminated. So I think overall, the biggest thing just with anything is just to always keep learning and trying to, to figure out more about everything that you're using. Sort of my simplistic way of that I think about this is I see dentists who take a course 
put on by another dentist, let's learn it right, about yeah. bonding, about dental bonding. Sure. Um, they have the same training in dental bonding, right? But they're going to listen to a dentist talk about bonding. And, sure. and they do that maybe once every few years, they go to a course on dental bonding. And I look at it and I go, well, when I go to those courses, I hear this very similar to what I learned in dental school 20 years ago, right? Sure. From somebody who probably went to dental school 20 years ago, like myself, right? <laughs> Versus you who has like, you know, advanced training and you work with it every single day, all day long on sure. these materials and you put together these instructions. And so I always tell dentists, if you want to get better at bonding, all you need to do is read the instructions by the people who do the testing. And, and I think the percentage of dentists that have got, have read the instructions for their bonding agent versus the dentist that have got, has gone to listen to a new lecture about bonding. There's a very disconnect there, right? Sure. And I think that's throughout the entire product development pipeline. And so, you know, I, I'd love to hear kind of how, what you do at Vista Apex yeah. uh, to develop these products. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I think before diving into some of the nitty gritty details, you know, from a, a high level standpoint, we try to, you know, really align our KOL and dental group that we work with, you know, one of them, of course, being you with our internal team for really market driven development. So we've got about 10 to, to, to 15 docs that we work really closely with either on product ideas, product feedback, testing prototypes, all of those things, and then aligning that with our internal team. So we've got a great group of engineers, um, which you met when you were here um, with you know, various areas of expertise in mechanical engineering, electrical, and then biomedical engineering. We also have Dr. Michael Miyasaki, who's our chief dental officer, and then our CEO, Scott Lamrand, who's a chemist by training. So when we really, you know, marry those two groups, the practicing dentists um, with the clinical expertise, and then our internal, more engineering or chemical or material sort of uh, experience that we have, I mean, it really helps align things from a product development standpoint, make sure every I is being dotted and T is being crossed during the development cycle to make sure that the products that we do eventually launch are a success in the market. And then, you know, beyond that too, it really takes a whole team, multifunctional groups in every department of the company to really launch a product successfully. So overall, you know, we've got a great team. Again, you said that you met everybody when you were out in Wisconsin a few months ago, and that's really just our, our strategy is aligning those clinical experts in our, our KOLs with our internal sort of engineering and sort of science uh, expertise. Yeah, and I think you do a great job. And what, what I've been really impressed with Vista Apex is your, you know, you highlighted it, that, that really you, you focus on innovation, on creating new things that are well-tested and proven that, that you bring to the marketplace, which I think that's relatively unique in the industry, right? Uh, that's, that's one of the things. And obviously that's kind of one of the things that I like to do is to innovate things too. So, right. it's, it's, you know, we, we share that passion. And, and I think that like your role is key though, which is making sure the stuff works, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could you talk to the audience about how you, like the kind of testing that you do? Cause I, I, you know, I saw the machines yeah. and like, even if I wanted to, right. In my office, unless I was <laughs> going to be like developing a laboratory to test this stuff. I'm not going to do what you do, right? Sure. You know, we have, I guess, from a high level standpoint too, you know, the FDA for any product development by like a classification of, of medical device has certain criteria that you have to uh, meet, right? But it's really up to the company to establish the procedure of product development, including all the testing that's needed. So we have a six stage process that we've developed that really brings us from the sort of idea ideation all the way to commercialization and product launch. So just to kind of highlight some of those a little bit, stage one really is our market evaluation. So looking at market research, initial voice to the customer, high level product criteria, including any clinical engineering operational considerations, really trying to answer, does this project make financial sense to the company? Stage two is our product initiation. So here's where we put together a detailed project plan. We use a lot of Gantt charts to manage our products. So everything is cross-functional, like I said. So there's all the engineering work. There's all the quality work, which is all the testing that needs to be done from a production standpoint once it is launched. Marketing and sales, aligning those up you know, for any marketing collateral. And then defining, obviously, when the product launch timeline is going to be and, and maybe a target trade show. But here in stage two, we really look at putting together a fully in-depth design criteria. So what are the features? What are the benefits? Cost considerations, if there's comparable products on the market, 
what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages of those, performance claims, safety and biocompatibility testing we have to do on, on pretty much all products, shelf life and stability requirements, anything for sterilization and cleaning, reliability, all of those things are at least defined at this standpoint. And then we move into our third stage of development, which is our design realization. So this is where sort of the meat and potatoes of the engineering work is done. So we'll go through taking our design criteria and our inputs from the last stage, and then trying to get to the answer of how do we make sure we address all of those criteria sufficiently. So this is where we really go through an iterative process of you know, designing, creating, testing, updating, refining, going through those aspects more, more from just the engineering side at this point, at this standpoint, all while mitigating risk. So there's risk in the design, there's risk from manufacturing, and there's risk from the usability side, from the dental professional side. So trying to mitigate risk in every sort of asset or facet of the, of the device and product that we can think of. So the end goal of this product is basically developing a a finalized prototype, a commercially viable product that then we feel good about um, moving forward with. Jumping into the fourth stage, this is our verification and validation stage. So this is where a lot of the testing that you're alluding to would take place. So this is where if we have, you know, like a, a new adhesive or dental material, restorative dental material, we're going to do shear bond strength testing, we're going to do adhesion testing, we're going to do biocompatibility testing for cytotoxicity, mutagenicity, there's a, a ton of tests. There, there are standards that define, you know, what tests may or may not be required. And then it's up to us to determine that. But usually it's, it's running a gamut of a lot of these tests for anything that is you know, supposed to be long-term sort of implantable, like a, a dental material or like a endodontic sealer or something like that. We will have to do in vivo animal studies. So all of those are completed in this stage. And really, if we look at verification and validation, the terms of those words or the definitions, verification is basically making sure that all of our design outputs match our inputs. So we made this device did it meet what we were originally trying to make, right? So if it has this performance claim, did we actually achieve that claim? And then validation is, does the product actually meet the user's needs? So does it function sufficiently to a dental professional to basically accomplish its intended use? So these are all things that are done in this stage and writing, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 test reports, summarizing all of our performance testing that we do. And then at this stage, you know, it's really important for us to get sort of that beta site feedback from our KOL team. So sending prototypes out, getting initial feedback on performance, on handling, anything ergonomic, uh, ergonomic features, because that all plays into it being uh, successful in the marketplace, obviously. So that is for sure one of the most important, if not the most important part of this stage is getting that clinical buy-in from the dentists. And then with that too, you know, we, we do have a lot of testing ability at our facility, but it is really important for us to align with universities and external labs. So Marquette uh, University School of Dentistry is about 40 minutes away from our facility. We've got a great research arrangement there and they've got way more expensive equipment than Scott would ever let me buy. So, <laughs> so we, we go up there and we do whatever testing we need to do. You know, just other highlights with this stage, we do practice validation builds and production to make sure our operators are trained, to make sure our quality individuals know how to evaluate and test the product um, before it's released for sale. And then anything from the supplier side, you know, so like I keep saying, it's very cross-functional. It's the engineering and product development team is really driving a lot of this, but making sure that we have all our supplier qualifications, any auditing, any testing on the supplier materials, just to make sure that they meet our high quality standards. And then at this point, everything's kind of buttoned up um, and, and packaged up. So then stage five is our final design review and design transfer. So this is where all documentation is completed and the product is actually transferred to production where it can then be built. So, you know, really it, it depends in terms of all the testing that we do, but we do a lot of anything that's chemical based. We do at least two or three analytical tests on each batch of product before it's released, just to make sure again, that it meets the specifications that are called out for in the design. All of our equipment goes through, you know, a whole slew of testing that we have defined for our device release testing protocols. Um, so really, it's 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 a lot of a lot of work, and it's very cross functional. But that's sort of 
high level our process um, in our stage gator process where we go through. And the last stage that I, I forgot to mention is our sixth stage. So that's a post-market review. This happens six months after launch. And this allows us to look at any market feedback we received to date, any university publications, any complaints, any opportunities for cost savings, any of that to really make sure that we're always, you know, not only to continue to innovate new products, but also make improvements or iterations where warranted on existing products too. That's great. I mean, I, you know, I think it's kind of, kind of like a how it's made for, it'd be cool to do like a how it's made for dentistry on like one yeah. product, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, that TV show where you're like, I didn't know that, you know, getting a ballpoint pen to it uh, took so much effort, right? Right. And when you open up that package in the in, at the dental practice, you're not thinking about like in that bottle of adhesive, what went into making it, right? right. And you did a great job of highlighting, I think, the amount of effort that goes into that. And then also what, before you use it in a patient's mouth, the, the, the rigors that that has gone through. Cause I think that a lot of dentists are just like, oh, it's just an adhesive. I'm going to just put this on and figure out how it works in my practice. Well, you're not going to have have anywhere near the experience and rigor that you've put it for before it ever gets shipped to the practice. Right. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, if you want to do a, a sequel to, to this podcast, I mean, come on over to Vista Apex again and we can get like a little GoPro or something and we oh, can totally got to do it. See how yes. adhesive, yeah. How an adhesive is made. <laughs> well, and I, you know, I want to, I want to highlight some of the things that were like, we're talking very high level, but like right. Vista Apex in very, very recent times has unveiled the products that come to mind for me are like. Uh, Regen, which is the first bioactive adhesive composite. I mean, we're talking about revolutionizing, revolutionizing demineralization right. uh, re, or remineralization uh, with composites. You have Pink Wave, which is the best light out there. Period. Yep. I mean, it's it's it's, it's awesome. I, I just love that product. Plus, it's just cool and fun. It's just it's a, such a cool product. Velvet Etch, which is like the best etch. That you know, it's like the a luxurious premium etch that stays where you put it. Uh, yep. You have seam free, which is like makes placing. Comp- I mean, these are these are products which are kind of iterations and categories that exist, but bring them to the next level. And that doesn't just happen, right? It doesn't just you don't just order a uh, regen and it shows up and it's, you're the first one using it. Like that has been developed by the same guy that developed wet dental bonding right dr dr kanka and dr miyasaki and scott lambert those i mean just some of the best people in dentistry who you know and i and i know you are actively out there listening to to the marketplace talking to universities like you said what's next for vista apex yeah we've we've got some exciting uh products to be launched here at the end of this year and early next year so definitely uh you know to all the listeners, keep your eyes out for that. And then if there's anybody interested in, in working with us from an R&D standpoint as a prototype evaluator, or if you are affiliated with a university and you want to do research, we've, we've supported about 20 research projects over the last five years with universities all over the world. Or if you even have a product idea that you're interested in, you know, seeing about feasibility, bringing it to market, you know, definitely reach out to us. We've got interest in any and all of that and, you know, want to support, you know, dental professionals in the dental industry as much as we can. So our website is vistaapex.com. Head there and you can submit a contact form. There's an email address. And yeah, that would be great to hear from you. Alex, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I look forward to doing the how it's made <laughs> at some point in the future. But yeah. Thanks so much for being on the podcast, man. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Dr. Laskin. I really appreciate it. And yeah, looking forward to hosting you at our facility again here soon. Thanks a lot.